So there were a few things that stuck out to me from that passage. One, obviously it's set in a cemetery, but there was also this very strong emotional tie to generations past, even this great grandmother that Sinclair himself hadn't met. And I picked up that the sisters also had some grief going on. So I'm curious, did you know setting out that you wanted to write a story that was about grief of losing loved ones and also the grief of, you know, the experience of being forced out of your home? Or did that just kind of come up naturally? Uh, I never really know what I'm doing when I start. So I, I often feel like when I'm writing, it's kind of like sketching something where I'll have, like I knew when I was writing this that it would be a working class Australian character and that it would be, that the the female would be, you know, a ruined character. So I had sort of things that I wanted, but in terms of piecing together, no, I never, I never know what's really going to happen. I'll know that I need a scene that has some kind of connection or some kind of emotional you know, whether it's the lead up to the kissing scene or, you know, in this scene they're getting to know each other with nobody else around, really, apart from Elise. So it's sort of what ways can you tell a story that reveals a bit about those characters and brings out their backstory and all those interesting things about them whilst also showing them connecting and and moving the story forward. So, yeah. So now... Clueless the whole time. (laughs) While your subconscious delivered. It was a really beautiful scene. I loved that moment when she's looking at his hands and there's so much revealed just from his hands. There was also a lot of historical detail in that scene. Like there was the lock of hair. There's, you know, the reference to the Luddites and also to the clearances was sailing. So can you talk a little bit about your research process? I I just love that part. That's that's why I started to write fiction. So I work as a historian, but writing fiction felt to me like a new way of researching things that I don't get to do at work because obviously what I do at work is very Australian based. So there are, are stories from you know, France and England and all over the world that I wanted to learn more about. So I probably go a bit too deep on the <laughs> on the research, but I really love it. And also for me to write a character, I really have to have a huge amount of um, backstory from them. So I had to, particularly because Sinclair is Australian, I needed to know what that looked like in terms of when his grandmother arrived and making sure that fit in time wise when for when there was transportation so a lot it's always back and forth I don't do a whole lot of research then sit down to write I'll read a couple of non-fiction books or I'll have an idea already and then I'll start writing and then I'll come across something where I don't know so with this this book in particular it was sort of well if his father's Scottish you know, it's like, well, what did that look like? What did Scottish migration to Australia look like? And then I went off and did some research and then incorporate that in and then move forward with the next bit. So it's very much I'll be researching the whole way through. Yeah, that's so interesting. I did not know you're a historian. Every time I meet a historian who's also a writer, I'm like, I want to talk to you so much. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So the question I would like to ask you is, how do you think about the line between historical accuracy and narrative joy? I I don't like deliberate bending. Like I think if you know something is true, but I also really love the idea of the possible, you know, is it, it you might not have an actual historical reference of this type of thing happen but is it possible that it happened did the rules of society and life and all those things allow for that at the time so I kind of like that and and pushing that I mean that's the whole that's the whole fun of historical romance is that you take all those rules and and restrictions on people's lives and you do push them and and see how love conquers all so that's that's sort of where I sit I couldn't put something in that I knew to be 
completely inaccurate. In The Beginner's Guide to Scandal, I had to completely change the timeline to make it line up with the invention of postcards, which is, oh. which is like that. <laughs> it's like that much of the book. But it's like, oh, maybe no one will know. It's like, no, just got just to gotta do it. I couldn't not. So that's kind of how it sort of works for yeah. me. Where, yeah. Because he, I read that book. So like he's carrying around this postcard and it's like evidence yes. of his love, right? So I yes. get why you needed to do yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And of course, postcards came out of the Paris siege. So originally, Scandal was going to be set five years before, but then the siege doesn't happen until after that. Mm. So yes. So there's so much to history it. to know. <laughs> <laughs> so another thing that stood out, I know you wrote Sinclair as an Australian hero and in this scene, at least, we were exploring a lot of the kind of generational trauma of the various ancestors being forced out of Great Britain and into Australia in different ways, and then what that life was like. Do you feel that you have an Australian point of view that you bring to historical romance? Absolutely. It's It's impossible not to, definitely in terms of class consciousness and it's a very complicated (laughs) relationship that historically Australia has with Britain in sort of the closeness and this antagonism the whole Mm -hmm. way through like and so it's very hard to know how to describe but I find it very hard to think in any other way from that perspective and very much about the working class and, you know, that sort of idea of taking all these sort of ideas and and what's going on in Britain at the time and transporting them to another place and then seeing how that plays out. So, and then of course, you know, Sinclair goes back and sees this country where he can't, he doesn't fit in. He's, He's a nobody because of his working class background. Whereas in Melbourne, the family is quite well off because of the gold rushes. They've made a lot of money from selling booze and cordials. So that whole contrast between what is happening between the two countries, I find really interesting. Yeah, that is very interesting. And do you have plans to write more Australian characters? Yes, I do. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) In my, I think in my book four. So yes, I think I need a, I think I need a a plucky Australian woman to go and find her fortune. So yeah. 